Hey, welcome back. It's another edition of the Club Cool Podcast. I am your host, Barrett Dudley, and I am joined on the other side of the table here in the Washed Media Studios by Phil Battaglia. Phil, what's good? Hello, Barrett. How's it going today? Pretty good. Um, you came in today, and I, I, I don't think that you knew that it's International Podcast Day. No, and I, I to- didn't. And I told you, and your world got better. 2020 has a new outlook. <laughs> Um, you know, the events of last night just completely, completely washed away when you learned that today is International yes. Podcast Day. And that is, um, that's just huge news for, for us here at Club Cool, where we meet at the intersection of style and pop culture. Um, we're record. I, I, it, this is, it's just, it's, uh, it's serendipity that we're here recording on International Podcast Day. Of course. Now that's, we a, have to do it that's according to Spotify. Yeah. You can listen to the Club Cool podcast on Spotify. If you're, if you're not, you could be. If that makes it easier for you, whatever floats your boat. Um, we've got a good show for you today. By the way, if you've not gone and listened to our interview with Pat Allen from Uniform from last week, great podcast. Many people are saying so. Man, he was a great interview. Yeah, he really was. Super, just, I mean, genuine, awesome guy. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed talking to him. So make sure you listen to that one. Um, today, mostly going to be fueled by by listener questions, listener prompts. Um, you can submit yours we do this type of thing. We we do calls for them uh, on the Instagram account at Club Cool Pod. Uh, that's 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 the best way to do it. And um, yeah, got some good stuff here today. One of the I know I got a. This is not on the rundown today, Phil. But somebody just submitted to the to the little Q and A thing. They just said gym fits. Mm. Just gym fits. And I, th- it's not an uncommon request that we get. Yeah, I just never. I'm just not totally sure, like how much uh, you know what really to talk about. Like I get, I get targeted on Instagram all day long from like these brands, like Ten Thousand, and yeah. you know, there's like I feel like there's 19 different makers of shorts mm-hmm. right now, like gym that stretch in shorts. all the right ways. Yeah, the stretch in all the right ways, and the like have some liners and a bunch uh-huh. of pockets, and they're, the the trend is like very short right now because you got to be able to do your squats. You know, yeah. you need all the flexibility. Deadlifts, you're lunging, you're power deadlifting, cleans. power cleaning. You know, you're 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 on the you're on the the heavy lifting set up there. You're probably dusting your hands with powder. You're doing all that type of stuff. Man, no, Anyways, I'm not. I wasn't going to talk about the day that today, but then you walked in, and you you are you are you are dripping in gym kit swag, today, <laughs> my dude. Like, yeah, I have to uh, hit it after this. You you are in. I'm just gonna. You can check us out on on youtube.com slash watch media. That producer Randy is that the. Did I get the link there right? Okay, yeah. Well, it's the YouTube. It's it's Wash Media's YouTube. It's very easy to find. Yeah. Uh, if that if that if I was wrong on the slash there, but if you want to if you want to see Phil's top half, anyway, you're. I'll I'll describe him for for those just listening on uh you know on their commutes in the car on their phone wherever. But you're in all black. Duh. And you 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 are you're swagged out in a cut off satisfy tee, so you are you are using you are wearing the clothes the way they were meant to be worn. Mm-hmm. You're not just you're not just taking that thing into the biker gang bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm usually at. Um, so you know it's got like the moth eaten holes on it. You got your tattoo showing off. You're in your 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 hyper green uh, ultra boost. So it's just it's like a full on. It's it's a swagged out gym kit. These shorts, so, I mean, all the short brands out there, great for them for getting things going and getting up and you know in the game of mm-hmm. athletic apparel. Yeah, but you're not you're not gonna beat Lululemon. Yeah, you're just not. Okay, all right. I'm I'm a Nike boy. You That's, are? Yeah, mostly. I just feel I've probably said this before, but when when I when I get dressed for the gym. And I end up in all Nike, a hundred percent Nike. I just, I just feel better. Yeah, I just feel doper. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Ad, that's adding like you know an extra few reps and five yeah. to ten pounds on on everything I do when I go. Wow. Well, yeah, that's food for thought. But that's that's really like so. I mean, I, I, Nike has not done one of their extra twenty five percent off of clearance mm-hmm. in a long time. They used to do that a few times a year since the pandemic. Just nothing. I, I, I guess they're just like. You know, padding their bank accounts with all the hyper exclusive limited drops that uh, that have been going on. Um, but that is usually where I pick up gym clothes. 
because yeah. they'll inevitably have like the shorts and the tops that I like mm-hmm. on a little bit of a discount, and then I take twenty five percent off that. But that's that's where I'm at. I like their uh, I like their shorts, and I like their just kind of you know general dry fit tops. Mm-hmm. I'm a big I, I uh, in the cooler weather. I like the three quarter tight that comes down just uh-huh. below the knee. I'm into that. See, Nike fits a little large on me. It's a little okay. big. Yeah, especially the tops. Yeah. But then, like you're saying, I mean, the the, the Lulu stuff is great, and, and uh, you know, I, I've got some of that, too. But other than that, I really don't branch out much. No. And I've got, I've got for, the, the other thing about the gym stuff is that, like, I've got, like, enough of it, and it's, yeah. it's not something that I feel the need to replace or add right. to super frequently. So, my so feeling I'm, I'm, on I'm it. Just not, I'm not in there, like, uh, like, uh, like it's it's just not necessarily a place where where I'm I'm intent on... You know, ma- like making sure that I'm 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 always in like fresh threads. Yeah, I'm not either. But if you're so, is I wear at, at least the shorts probably five to six days out of the week, at least once during the day, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's not all day, but at least once. If you're gonna wear something like that that frequently, True. then go ahead and get the good stuff that's going to that you can wash, maybe even dry it if you have to. Yep. Uh, and it'll hold up because that if it's frequently used, that's that's how I justify buying geese is because I, I wear them all the fucking time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I wore them once a quarter, I couldn't justify that. Right. But yeah, if but, you're gonna but, if you're gonna wear them out, then then do it. Get the good stuff and like even with satisfy. Now this was on sale, mm-hmm. but I really love they have this new collection uh, called LSD Long Slow Distance. Okay. Which I I just I totally dig everything that they do, and as long slow distance is that how you? That's how I live my life. That's how you live your life, yeah. <laughs> quarter mile at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, w- with your with your Lulu shorts, are you going liner? No liner. No liner. Mm-mm. Ever. And then you just you, you commando under there. No, you, I have uh, Under Armour uh, un- compression shorts. Okay, no Lulu compression shorts. No, I've never tried them. No. Okay. No. All right. Under Armour works, and yeah, you know you can get like a bunch of those. Yeah, for sure. Right, well, that's a good. I mean, you know, look, we added it to the rundown. Boom. There's some. There's some gym kit talk. Bombas um, make some hell. You know, really nice socks. They do. They do. Speaking of Bombas, let's talk about today's sponsor, which is Bespoke Post. This fall, as you get back into the swing of things, Bespoke Post has brand new seasonal box of awesome collections for guys, guaranteed to upgrade your life. I'm looking at them now. I mean, just as always, every every time I hit bespokepost.com, it, there's just there, there's stuff that I want here. There's new stuff. We talked about this over easy with it. You get a whole you get a whole ass skillet, a <laughs> cast iron skillet, and and delicious pancake mix. Um, you know, there's always some cool type of clothes, maybe some shoes. There's a box called Laced right now, which has some very cozy looking kind of sneaker mocks in it. Th- there's something for everybody, which is one of the best things about box of awesome and bespoke post whether it's geared to upgrade your autumn craft beers you know or those cozy threads for when the temperature dips bespoke post only sends guys the best stuff every month no matter what you're into they've got you covered so to get started take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you they release new boxes every month it's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel anytime each box costs only $45, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. I can attest to that. Every time I get one of these things, uh, $45 feels like an absolute steal because I can I can do the math myself and and figure out that usually it's far closer to to 100 bucks worth of gear in there. And and you can get 20% off of your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code CLUBCOOL at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com dot com code club cool for 20 percent off your first box okay uh phil before we jump into some of these kind of more listener inspired questions i wanted to get your take on something that i participated in uh on the sunday scaries podcast this past weekend Uh uh-huh will had a great little concept where we put together our fall clothing mount rushmore and so I did. I did, I I've, I've not uh, alerted you to what I, what I put on there because I didn't want to influence your decisions. Yeah. But I just I liked the I liked the idea and I thought that um, you know it made sense for 
for our podcast here too. I wanted to get uh, I wanted to get what I wanted to hear your take. I wanted to hear mm. what the items that you had on your fall your fall clothing Mount Rushmore. I have a feeling we're going to overlap on some of those. Okay. I hope we do. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for sure. I mean, this is, <laughs> you know, I wear black jeans year round, but nothing's going to change in the fall. If anything, they're going to be even heavier in the rotation. Black jeans with just about everything. Um, and also, you know what? I need to find some another light wash jean. Uh, I'm not talking like white, but just a classic denim. Maybe from John Elliott, now that we're thinking about it. <laughs> okay. Um, the black jeans. Phil is, is dreaming of, yeah. of new denim here. He's gone off into his own <laughs> world just picturing all the kits that he's going to get off. <laughs> um. I didn't put any footwear on here. Do we need to do that? No, no. And if, uh, Will and I both skipped footwear. Okay, on, yeah, on the that's fall a whole Mount other Rushmore. Thing. Um. So I have a couple cashmere everyday cashmere from J Crew. Okay, and that'll be. Yeah, I'll be repeating that outfit a lot. Yeah, I have a black. I have a gray. So we've overlapped already on the first two items. I, okay. I included two basics here on yeah. my on my four: a black cashmere crew neck sweater and black jeans. Yeah, those were two of mine. There you go. Um, and then also even keeping it right in my lane here, but basic tees. I like layering basic tees in the fall. You know, in in the summer, I'll be wearing the same kit, but no layering. Um, Uniform LA, they make a hell of a great little base layer if you're going to put something on top. Now, when you're talking about layering tees, you take a short sleeve tee and then you put another short sleeve yeah. tee on top of it. <laughs> yeah. No, some sort of outerwear piece over the tee. Yeah, yeah. Um, for whatever reason, I get too bunched up in there if I'm wearing a, a collar with another collar from the outerwear. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. just, I, I'll like do you it. Don't, you don't like to do a button up. With a with a coat on top, correct. Like with a with like some type of yeah. Okay, I don't know what it is. Um, so I also have a couple. I didn't put these in here, but two denim jackets, one black, one regular. Mm -hmm. Those all day. Um, I'm gonna make an appearance more than a few times in the jumpsuit that's coming back. The jumpsuit, it's time. It's time. It's time to to bust it out. I thought that today may be the day, but I'm gonna hold off. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's we, still a little warm. For yeah, that. A little bit. We've been having. We get this. We get this very Texas weather here, when it like starts to be fallish, mm -hmm. and if you're and you know like on my coffee run this morning, I'm in outerwear, I'm I'm in pants, I'm in boots, fifty five degrees, and now when we walk out of this podcast studio today, it's mm -hmm. going to be about eighty five. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's this weird little like. You can really start dressing in the mornings, yes. but then by the afternoon, it's like shorts and t-shirt weather again. So it's kind of like it's kind of a tease, but you know we got to know what's a tease. We got to take what we can get. This upcoming weekend would have been week one, I believe, of ACL. I know, and it's going to be absolutely perfect <laughs> weather. I know, I know. Isn't that terrible? It's mm. it's. I don't even like thinking about it. It's yeah. it's one of the things that bums me out the most. Mm. Yeah. Well, all right. Back to this. <laughs> My black cardigan. It's coming back. It's okay. going to be all over the place. Yeah. Uh, all Saints cardigan. And also, I mean, I keep that Patagonia on me, the Nano Puff. Now, that thing gets hot. So I need, I've been saying this for like a year and a half now. I need the Nano Puff vest. I just can't pull trig on it because I don't know how often I'm going to wear it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The, 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 the Nano Puff vest and really like fleece vests in general. Yeah. I, I, they, they, you really gotta, you really gotta make a statement. I feel like with the prints and the colors there, otherwise you just, it's been so co-opted by like yeah. the tech bros yeah. that you're just going to look like a Silicon Valley man. Right. You know, with you're going to be you, right. Yeah. You're going to look like you're, yeah. You're just like an Oracle. In. Yes. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And okay. so it's just like, it's, it's a little, you know, it, it's 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 just been very done. Yes, and it's got that connotation at the yeah. moment. And so right. so, so well, I think there you go. to do that type of vest, fleece or like little puffer thing like that, you just it, it's got to be something pretty pretty statement making. Mm -hmm. I feel like, but yeah, we we overlapped. A, we we did overlap the, the first two especially, and then you know you put your uh, your your black cardigan on here. I also had a cardigan. 
but mine was more of the uh, the Cowichan variety, uh-huh. which was like the like I'm talking like big chunky, almost robe like knit with the big collar that rolls. Yeah, uh huh. Typically with a rolled collar, and then you know bonus points if it's in some type of like native inspired or mm-hmm. Navajo type type of jacquard. Jacquard. Um, and uh, then my fourth one was a Patagonia snap tee fleece. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 You know, it's the people's champ. Yeah. So, you know what? If you can get your hands on the 18 East version of that, they, didn't they do a snap tee similar thing? I mean, yeah, they did. But all all of their fleece from last fall is actually it's still all available on it their is. website. Yeah. That's, I really they, like they, some they, of they, it. They, uh, that was before they were selling out drops yeah. left and right. Okay. And that stuff has still kind of uh, managed to sit there. Okay. So, you know. There you have it. Not that surprising, I guess. No, that, that we, you're not going to see that, much that we had that we had so so much overlap either. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, on, on to, uh, to to some of these other topics here. Again, these are pretty much all sent in via the Instagram at Club Cool Pod. A lot of these, uh, the the ones that we don't get to today, I'll I'll either try to answer on Instagram. Another great place to come ask these questions and 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 get some discussion and and some talk around them and drop some links is our Discord, mm-hmm. which. Uh, still is just, it's, it's, it's moving and grooving and there's a lot of great stuff in there, uh, to join the discord, go follow us or become, you know, a paying member of, of our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash club cool. You can either join it's $2 a month. You won't even notice it, or you can just follow us on Patreon. Either way I will set, that's where I send out the refreshed discord links. They expire after 24 hours. I haven't put one out in several days. I will do so later this evening. So if you want to come, if you want to come join up and, and pitch some of these questions in there and, and actually like be really, it's really easy to just drop some links in there and be like, oh, check out this brand. Here's a, you know, this that I really like. Uh, and mm-hmm. plus you got the mm-hmm. whole community at your, at your whim there. So, so everybody can contribute and, and help you out there. Uh, Discord, get that link at patreon.com slash club cool. Uh, but a lot of these, again, were submitted at Club Cool Pod on Instagram, where we do a little Q and A type sesh. And um, Phil, I th- I think that 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 um, the listeners out there they they saw you flexing in your in your flat brim hat uh, on on one of our posts. You know mm-hmm. when we when when we got a kit pick off in our uniform tees, yes. and they want to know more about it. And so I've brought mine in as well. Uh-huh. Again, if you want to see these, if you want to <clears throat> see these Johns. Check out the YouTube. Yeah. Both of us have these Stetson hats from Montfrey. Just a couple cowboys. <laughs> here in Austin. Shouts to Montfrey on, on South Congress, which is a really, really Everything in there cool great. store. Everything. That specializes in these custom Stetsons. And um, let's let's first talk about just like the experience. You go in there. And there are lots of hats available for purchase. There's like Stetson Open Roads. There's some straw versions. There's there's other stuff. These are all kind of off the rack purchases. Mm-hmm. And then they have these special Stetsons, which you go and they're on the wall, and they look <laughs> really really funny <laughs> because the brims are about five inches wide, uh-huh. and they're just like the big dome. Yeah, you look like. It's like something from a cowboy movie, right? With that big, <laughs> that like. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That little tube, tube looking top. I just realized yours says Malfrey on the inner thing does, there. Does yours not? No. Oh, wow. Wow. There you go. And then that's how it starts. Yeah. You shave down the brim to the length that you want, and then they start going on on the shape of your crown, which can be pinched, or it can be more like that open road, or they can do the little telescope one, or they can, you know, they, they shape Anything. that thing to your heart's desire. And then, you know, you've got your brim options. I just have a flat brim at the moment. You have a little, what's it called? A pencil? Pencil curl. A pencil curl around your brim. Um, there are multiple color options to choose from. And then, of course, then of course you get into your kind of like your accessorizing. Mm-hmm. And they've got really, really cool stuff to add to your hat. So all sorts of bands. You know, they've got woven ones. They've, they've got, um, you know, there are the silk ribbons like you have. There are some leather kind of straps Mm -hmm. uh there are pins i have a little vintage parrot pin you can get the little pin then the the little they're like the 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 longer pointy pins with the little felt things on the top they've got it all they've got it all the whole experience is really nice too it's it's 
you sit down at a horseshoe. I mean, horseshoe shaped bar. There are drinks. Um, no cocktails, I don't believe, but they have beer and maybe a little wine. I'm not positive. Yeah, it doesn't feel like they're doing that right now. Uh, you got to stay masked up. Do you? I mean, you can take it off to look at yourself. Yeah, but the, the but yeah, but okay. the, the, there was no offer of uh, hey, have a beer while you. Well, buy this let's just pretend hat. that none of this bullshit's going on right yeah. now, and yeah. we're not in a total pandemic. Yeah, the experience is elevated. Um, everybody there is super helpful, very knowledgeable. You get to sit down with them, shape the hat, and not only that, if you're not happy with it, a year from now, go back and have them reshape it to something that's more suitable to whatever mm-hmm. you want. Yeah. They're great, and um, everything in there, I believe, is Stetson, very high quality. There, there is one other brand that they carry uh-huh. for a specific color, and it's also a fa- it's it's a well known brand. I believe yeah. it starts with an R, but it's slipping my mind right now. Um, Resistol. Yes. Yeah. And then also in the back, and now we're just getting into the store, not even the hats, but. In the back, they've got a whole art gallery. Yeah, they've I mean, got the whole home... the, the atmosphere it's of great. this is part of the is is absolutely it 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 makes it feel, you know, if if you walked into a to a store, Cavenders, Cavenders, yes, or even Allen's to an extent, and did this, it wouldn't be the same. But right. they 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 have clearly like they know what they're doing as far as what the store feels like and mm-hmm. looks like and smells like and what else they carry there with like all the vintage. Japanese clothing pieces and like the, and, cor- the and the crystals and the candles and the home goods and like yeah. the little bar up front called Little Brother, which you know is like a little coffee bar and and you know you can grab a beer there too as well. Um, like you said, the art there's art in the back. The whole thing is just very much. It, it feels like a very cool, elevated experience, like you're saying. Um, and and then the fact that you've got somebody working there right in front of you at that bar, doing the steam, mm-hmm. you know busting out their little hat blocks like the whole thing to like get this the the shape that you want is no it's gonna take a while it's very cool yeah you gotta budget yourself a good hour in there oh yeah yeah definitely at least if you're gonna make a purchase yeah um now i to be completely honest i'm not totally st- I, I love your hat i'm not totally stoked on mine i walked out of that store and got home and was like what did i do <laughs> i'm serious <laughs> you know you drop you know this kind of cash, which this isn't like a Nick Fouquet, but yeah, it's no, still expensive. That's, I mean, that's that is. I, I should we you should say that it. about Montfray here in Austin is that th- this is. I mean, we can just we can just talk turkey here. That this experience starts at around like three hundred dollars, mm-hmm. which is really really. Which I mean, it's an expensive hat, mm-hmm. but it's super low for like the what we're talking about right. here to like have it custom shaped to your head and get mm-hmm. and and add all these accessories and like get this experience because. The, the designer type stuff that they're that they're making, you know, that they're kind of like following the trend here, whether it's like Aspen Hatter or Nick Fouquet or, you know, there's a there's a couple like out of Chicago that are very famous and popular. Like those are four figure hats. Yes. So so this is actually like a very you know, it's a it's they're it, they're reasonably priced, they're reasonably for, priced for what they're they're offering you here. But still you want to get home and be like, yes. Yeah. What a great purchase. Yes. I didn't have that either, but it's grown on me. The more you wear it, and I'm planning on going back, having something added on top of this silk, um, and redoing possibly the top. I don't really know. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Uh, so so I, I ended up with this. I want to say it's, um, I want to say it's pecan is the color that they call this. Yeah. And it's a dark brown. And I, 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 I kind of, the color that I was really into, which I can't remember now, it was similar to the one that you have, I believe. They were out in my size. They were out of yeah. stock. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of got talked into the brown. I thought it'd be good for fall. I, rem- I I felt like I remembered St. Laurent doing some like kind of chocolatey brown stuff a few mm-hmm. years back. Um, so I was like, oh, all right, that'll be good. That'll be good with boots. It'll be good. good. Good for fall. Good with like denim, you know, all that type of stuff. And and now I'm wondering if I if I messed up on the color. Do, am I looking too outback, too no. Australian, no. too Indiana Jones? No, nah, you're in your own head. I'm in my own head. Now yeah. you do need some... Some accoutrement. I need top. more accoutrement. You do. Yeah. 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 But that's, and again, included in the price, like you yeah. said, you get to keep coming back, messing with it, mm-hmm. doing the shape stuff, and then, and then you know, you can you can pick out stuff that you want on your hat as well. You went with the silk band there, and, and that's what I, 
I think I need something like that. Yeah. So I, I intend have to this get... little pin, but you can't even really see it. Mm-hmm. I like. Yeah, I like that. I, I, I opted to to forego the feathers. Now that's always tempting. Um, so th- it's just a lot. It, it also it takes it into costume territory. Yeah, exactly. I feel like. Yeah. So that, to me, a feather. I've seen them done in straw hats. That it looks better. Okay. To me. To me. Um, now, one of the things that they offer, and one of the things that is like very Nick Fouquet pushing it into this kind of artisanal mm-hmm. space, is you can get this thing distressed there with fire. Oh, really? Yeah. That's new. And Wait, they have a blowtorch back there? I, I think so. Wow. So I skipped that. Yeah. But I think I need to add a little burn. I think I need to add some burns, <laughs> Phil. Light me up, baby. Light- <laughs> Light me up. <laughs> I feel like that Matt might help push it. He might set you off into that a little bit into the more you know the kind of like the trendier area that I area that I want to be in, and less like uh, like I bought this in Melbourne. Man, I'd be terrified that they would burn it right through the the whole hat. Well, that's uh, you know you got to take that risk. You got <laughs> you got to risk it for the biscuit. <laughs> Man, I didn't know that they were doing flames in there. So I might that that might be something I I experiment with okay. when I when I get back in there. All right. Um, beyond the experience with these type of flat brim hats, how did how did you did you kind of when you made this purchase did you feel like it was going to blend right into your wardrobe, or did you have an idea of how you wanted to style it? I had some fits picked out. Yeah. And you have to. I think you have to. You have to. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. I've been thinking about this for years, and I keep, I would get right up to the edge, and then I'd back off. Mainly because Malfrey wasn't in existence. Right, right. Yeah, and once totally. they opened, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I can go in there, I can try on, customize. Because before that, for us, I, I mean, I'm sure there was another shop in town, um, but I didn't want to spend that kind of money on something that I didn't have any say so on. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I'd never, I have not been a hat boy like this. I felt, I mean, there's guys that have had this going on for years, you right. know? Right. Um, and I just felt like I, I'm, I wanted to make it, I wanted to make sure that I looked okay in it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, um, I I think that that the appeal to me really bleeds into like the 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 piece of this southwestern style that I yeah. like so much. So when I, when I kind of envisioned what this would look like, like I was thinking like flannels and denim jackets and snap shirts, denim shirts, mm-hmm. um, you know, boots. Not necessarily western boots, but definitely western boots as well. You know, so I, I'm I was very much leaning into that kind of like Santa Fe, Austin, Gary Clark ish vibe. Uh-huh. But uh, there are certainly, you know, you can get a little bit. I feel like a cal- the, you know, your kind of kind of California vibe that you put out sometimes with mm-hmm. like washed out vintage tees mm-hmm. and and slim jeans and you know distressed sne- sneakers also can really work for this type of stuff. Yeah. And then there's also like a, there's, the, you can go kind of Southern with it too. And when I say that, I'm like almost kind of like picture, I'm picturing like, like, like almost Mumford and Sons. Yeah. In that way mm-hmm. where, where, you know, it's, it's, it's more tailoring. Yeah. Even, um, you know, I, Sid Mashburn comes to mind with like some, some custom suiting that just kind of has that, that like Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi vibe. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I also just wanted to, to pick up here on Billy Reed because okay. we had we got a question about uh, our thoughts on Billy Reed and specifically their Fall Twenty collection, which is surprisingly inspired by Copenhagen and Danish culture. Um, now, when I look through it, when I look through some of this stuff, it still very much has that Billy Reed ness to it, which is very kind of a little bit trad, a little bit southern, with a little bit of like the kind of like. Japanese stuff worked in as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Billy Reed is actually it was actually kind of one of the original North Stars for Halle Brothers. It, it was a brand that that the uh, that the founders were really interested in and really kind of gravitated towards as as just like an as a w- one of many inspiration points. Yeah. Um, and I always love the way 
that they put things together. It's really well styled. It's really timeless. Mm-hmm. Uh, the shops are always great. Man, that one that they just opened on South Congress is it's, it, dope. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, uh, you know, uh, they they choose their locations really well. So they're in, they're a really cool store in Soho in Manhattan. Uh, their store in New Orleans on Magazine Street is incredible. They always have great art. Um, he has a lot of Butch Anthony originals in there. Okay, yeah. So, uh, you know, I think that the... I like the brand vibe overall. I, I, I only own a few things from Billy Reed, and um, I really like the things that I do have, but the fit has not always been there for me in particular. I feel like they were... The, five six seven years ago they were slow to introduce like a slimmer fit right which is what i was wanting and so when i would play around with stuff like their their button downs or their shirts i always felt like they were a little too boxy Mm -hmm. on me um but man it's it's uh billy reed is a really like you know it's a it's it's absolutely like a great it's a great base especially for anybody but it's like kind of in our age range, yeah. Kind of early to mid thirties, and has a little bit of extra disposable income, and wants to kind of like almost like take what they know, and and go up a level. Yeah, you because, can wear it to work. You can wear it out. Looks nice. It, but yeah, but it's very clean cut uh-huh. and traditional, and you're not breaking the wheel, and it's not going to be scary, and you're not trying anything too too mm-hmm. crazy. Just it's, elevated. It's just elevated. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's it, it, it's a great it's a great kind of it fits that they do blazers, you know. Um, so, so all your got great business casual type stuff as well, and then they do turn it up a notch every once in a while. They've got some great leather pieces, mm-hmm. and um, they they do occasionally have like some Japanese uh, capsule collections where stuff's made in Japan and it's got some of that flair as well. But uh, th- there are certainly some things from that kind of like Southern heritage look that that can work with these felt hats as well. Yeah, I like Billy Reed as a whole. I don't own anything just because the fit isn't for me. Um, but for my money, now it's going to be more expensive for most of the stuff, but not across the board. Um, I would go for Todd Snyder over okay. Billy Reed. Yeah, so I think Todd, Todd Snyder is like the New York version of Billy Reed yeah. to me. Mm-hmm. And that is that is more attractive to me as well. But then both of those brands, uh, also I'm, I feel like I'm generally picking Double RL over both of those brands sure. as well. Yeah. Because now we're into like the Austin Southwestern mm-hmm. kind of version of that that does have a little bit more like the clinky clanky conchos and turquoise <laughs> and, uh, and and pearl snaps yeah. and... and just a little bit more of that kind of like yeah that southwestern boho less city vibes Let, yeah Todd, that, you're very your spot on Todd Snyder is like the New York version um and in a bit even you know more elevated just as far as price point is concerned and materials yep. but like his he's done these for a couple of years now I believe but the Italian suede mm-hmm. jackets oh, that jackets. he does yeah Woo! yeah man those are so fun and those I mean the I I'm I'm right there with you, especially considering that that is basically like that is a way less expensive version of the five thousand dollar Tom Ford oh, versions really? of those. Uh-huh. Tom, he's like Ed Sheeran has has them in every color. He's constantly pictured in these in like the suede kind of cropped yeah. almost trucker style jacket. Exactly, and they're Tom Ford, and they're like five thousand yeah. dollars. So, yeah, Well, Todd, it's also, all relative. It's <laughs> all relative. He does, you know. Same price point on a lot of the jackets that Billy Reed does, four hundred bucks or three fifty for some some chore coats, mm-hmm. and it just kind of it's more broad as far as colors are concerned and patterns and I don't know it just has a a little bit more in my lane would yeah. be Todd yeah for sure but Billy Reed's great. A um, couple more things on these hats. It's uh it you know it is kind of an affectation. Like, it, it, and it's it's part of it at the at first. You yeah. look at a guy like, you know, who I mentioned earlier, Gary Clark, um, or Mark Weistrack from Midland. Like, they just look like they belong in the hat, mm-hmm. right? And so at first, like, without, and like you said, you know, where you kind of want to have fits picked out to be able to wear this for, it kind of wears you at first, I think. And then as you get more comfortable in it and wear it more and it becomes more a part of you, that affectation kind of disappears yeah, a little for bit. Sure. 
and it's it, and you're wearing it. It's uh-huh. part of of the vibe that you're putting out. That's a great way to put but it. But it does. It, there is like that transition period where you kind of feel like a yeah. dork in it. Yeah, you're the bumping first, into shit. You're bumping, with, yeah, with yes. the brim. <laughs> <laughs> and I honestly, I think the only thing to get out of that is to just keep wearing it. You have you just to. keep wearing it. You just keep like making it steady a the thing course that you do. You know now. Um, Gary Clark wears his to with a tilt. Yes, yeah, that's next level. That is, but Gary Clark is a man of uh, a lot of swagger. Yes, and a lot of stuff, <laughs> a lot of steez. So, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, a lot of good stuff. I you know, again, like I, I, I think about festivals. This mm. would have been this would have been my move this year. Mm. I would have gone with my with my hot new hat. I hate to hear that, man. Yeah, you had it all ready. New hat scooting. I tell you what, doing a festival in a mask would be difficult. Um, I'm not doing full it. time. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm, not doing a, I'm not doing a masked festival. I've done it in previous ACLs just due to the dust, but it was well, a you, bandana. You're talking about like wearing and, a bandana around yeah, your face, right? And there's no requirement to keep it on or off, yeah. and and you're not like struggling to like you know take a sip of water, or drink yes. a beer, or eat a taco. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways. Um, anyway, let me say anyway one more time. Anyway. <laughs> Let's jump into uh, to this next prompt here. Some of these questions involve resetting your wardrobe. So this first one uh, is basically, if you were going to, how would you do it? Where would you start? If you were just like hitting the restart button, you hate everything you own, wh- wh- what's what's happening? How you- I go through that constantly. I'm like, yeah. I'm over all this shit. Yeah. And that's why I just dumb it down and do ma- mainly what I do is just t-shirts and, and jeans and than a couple other things with footwear. But what I would do is make sure that my, my money was correct and I would reset and incorporate some more Japanese stuff. We've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Like what you like would Like capital. Kinda... Sure, yeah. A lot more capital. Yeah. Um, especially outerwear stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, Double RL. Those are the two brands that I would reset with if I was doing a full reset. You know yeah. what I mean? I would keep it in the same lane. I'm not going to start wearing shit that I, that I don't feel comfortable in. Right. But, um, yeah, that's that's how I would start it at least. Yeah. Yeah, There, there's uh, – you, you're kind of – I think when you're doing like a reset, your, your kind of – your key ingredient basics are really clutch. Mm-hmm. Like because it can be scary and overwhelming to say that you're going to – essentially get rid of your whole closet and then you and not have anything. Yeah. Um so I feel I I feel like you can you can be comfortable if you have like two pairs of jeans that you really love and like five t-shirts. Yeah. Or, or one t-shirt that you love the cut of and you have it in five colors. And one jacket or one outerwear. And it's, so that that that's like you you know you need something you got to have that little core. Yeah. That little nucleus. That do, that kind of doesn't move, mm-hmm. and I think if you can get that right, then you're then you're more free to feel comfortable just like wiping out the rest of it. Um, for somebody like me that has essentially been, you know, this is like like I say constantly, like this is a hobby for me. It's a it's a collection. Um, it can be overwhelming because I I I have too much stuff. That's just a fact, and so occasionally I do wish that like. You know, it's like a kind of a, you know, a fantasy that just like my entire t-shirt collection, which is bloated, would just like disappear, (laughs) would just like be lit on fire and I have no choice but to start over. Because as we talk about like these kind of intervention, these changing trends and right, you're like, oh, well, now I need a little more graphic tees. So you get some graphic tees Mm -hmm. and then. And then you're like, oh well, these don't go like like now I'm, I'm I got a funky coats and and I don't like them over gravity, so I need some more solids. And then the style of the solids that you like changes, and so you've got, and so you just you you know you keep kind of like chasing a little bit and adding because you you need a little bit more of this and then a little bit more of this and then a little bit more of this, and it's like then you end up with too much, but then it's hard to like get rid of stuff because you either you sort of like it, mm-hmm. you know, or it's not that old. And so, so I, I, one of the things that I've been doing recently is just kind of like, well, let me start with, with a, with a bad thing that I do. I will wear stuff in my closet because I'm like, oh, I haven't worn that in a while. I need to wear it. Even though it's not like in the top 
ten percent of the stuff that I love. And you're forcing yourself. So I, f- I force some stuff every once yeah. in a while, and that's not a that's not I shouldn't do that. Mm-mm. I should just get rid of it. I should pare down and have only stuff that I love. But it's very hard because, like I said, it's a collection to yeah. me. So I love. I I just like, you know, it's a it's like an art gallery, <laughs> of sorts. I'm like oh yeah, that that's nice. Great. It'll stay right there. It'll stay right there. <laughs> Do not touch. Um, so, d- so don't do that. D- uh, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Um, but yeah, and but I, I am also constantly like moving on from stuff. You know, if 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 I do put something on and I'm like, nope, it's like not even close. Yeah. Then it goes to the, it goes in the box for Buffalo Exchange, or it goes up on the Grailed or mm-hmm. wherever. Mm-hmm. And um, you know that that that's all. That's that's kind of. Leading into this next question, which is, you know, further to just resetting, what's your strategy for changing your wardrobe as styles change? And for me, that's kind of like what I'm saying. Like, mm-hmm. it's just a constant revolving door. So even though I, it, you know, it, if if I do, if I pull something out, and as Marie Kondo would say, it's not bringing me any joy whatsoever, it's gone. Yeah. And I agree. That's just, <clears throat> that's just part of the nature of, yeah. of all of this. Like, you're not, there's going to be stuff that, that you used to love that you hate now yeah i've been trying to incorporate more button down like short sleeve button downs long sleeve button downs i get real i I just i feel like they're too baggy around my arms Mm -hmm. and i want to roll them up and then when i roll them up i feel like i look stupid so i just go with the short sleeve and i need more of those that's one thing i've been adding a lot of yeah um i would also say get some help it's hard to do this on your own because you do you you can kind of get lost or not know what to do or if if you're already knee deep then then you have some attachments and stuff but like i was just talking to to our friend dave the circling back podcast uh this past week and like he basically like he and Alyssa just went into his closet and just perched good you know and i think having somebody to 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 bounce off of yeah to actually like push you on do you need this do you love it do you want to wear it do you does it yeah do the whole spark joy thing is really really helpful because you can kind of always talk yourself into some to yeah. holding on to something if it's just you sitting in mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, it, yeah, re- resetting is it's tough, man. And and I think that, like I said, just to to reiterate, it's it's keeping that nucleus of of a f- having a few things that you really like and are really quality, right? That while you reset, you can f- you can lean into. Mm-hmm. And just purge the rest, and then and then you go from there. Yep. And then you make conscious decisions, quality decisions, and and, and that's that's certainly that that's that's another thing that I would do with a reset is the la- for the last couple of years now, like my shopping is very like I'm not buying all that many items, mm-hmm. but they are they are more expensive pieces. They're well thought out, and so that's that's where it's like because. I don't want to add. I like. I, I'm not adding. I don't need to add. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very. It's just con, it's considered. I'd rather wear the shit out of stuff that I love mm-hmm. than do than than fall into the trap of like forcing stuff that that I'm not exactly that I'm only seventy percent in on. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Let's move on to a lightning round. A few quick questions that that we can answer pretty quickly before we uh, get on get on up out of here. Um. Are we ever going to grow our beards out? Is this coming from a listener? Yeah. Dude. <laughs> have you seen what I'm working with here? Look at these patches. This is it. This is as far as it'll go. Also, it itches really bad. If I don't if like I shave probably once a week. After that, it's under here starts itching. Mm-hmm. You could probably grow a nice a no. nice beard. No. no. I've got these bald patches. We we both are not like we're just not we're not cut out for the beard. No, beards. we're not. Uh, earlier in the pandemic when I had my, the longest my hair's ever been, uh-huh. I went a solid, man, it was at least two months. It might have been three with no shaving. Really? And it was, it just doesn't, it, it just doesn't fill in right. Nah. You know? And like. If I could grow a solid beard, believe me, I would do it. Yeah. I mean, not full time, but at least ever so often. Yeah, totally. I can grow a stash, but I look like an idiot. Mm-hmm. I've just I've decided in the last month that I that, and I feel like this is, I don't know this is a very generic thing, but I I I like, we both just kind of have very light scruff today. Yeah, this is what I this is what I like the best. 
Yeah, I, I, even this is a little long for me because this gets so dark. I have such dark. I feel like I don't recognize my face clean shaven. Yeah, and I don't, and I don't love baby. it. Yeah, uh-huh. but I also, I'm, I'm just, I don't have the capacity for full beard. No, yeah, we're not, we're not cut out for it. Okay, uh, this next one is less of a question and more just a complaint. He'd like an open letter from us to the Nike execs to fix the damn sneakers app. <laughs> I want to re- I want to talk about something again here, and I, we've we've said this before, but at this point, there is no reason for you to not have the sneakers app on every person's phone in your household, your spouse, your significant other. Get them on the sneakers app. Th- this is the issue. It's so easy to just wake up at nine a.m. and and do the Apple Pay thing and yeah. have it read your face. That you should just have everybody doing this yeah. because it's easy. Everybody's in. And then, and then you get the shoes, and then you put them on StockX or Goat for however much, mm-hmm. triple the price, and boom, you've made a few hundred bucks. <laughs> so, like, like that's 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 just that's the problem. Yeah. That's the issue with this. Everybody's is that in. Everybody is in, and everybody should be in because this is too freaking easy. Yeah. And on top of that, like, it, it, there's j- this thing that we're talking about where you can oh, well, get your girlfriend, get your wife, get your wife, get your dad, get your brother. Get your kids on their little iPhones. Get them on the sneakers <laughs> app. You, well, so people have figured this out, and so you can bot the sneakers app really easily too because yeah. you just you, you just have a program running hundreds of fake accounts that are just it's it's all a draw. It's all sneakers is basically a raffle now. It's basically a lottery, mm-hmm. and there's no reason that every person with a smartphone shouldn't be trying for these releases because it's too easy and it's too, and and then flipping them to make a make a buck. Is also too easy, and I I don't know how you fix that. Have you had any luck? Like, have you even tried like during these drops to get on your desktop or your laptop? Yeah, it, it, no, tough. Yeah, it's a tough scene. Not as not not very workable. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I I don't I, I have no other. I don't have any tips. I, I've not hit. In quite a while mm-hmm. on sneakers, and I, I'm I'm assuming that's just because there's m- literally millions of applicants essentially for every single one of these ones that that people know is going to be yep. sought after. Mm-hmm. And there's very I, I I don't I don't have an answer. Um. Okay, moving on. Uh, there is value to be found at TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Burlington, Co Factory, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, for clothing and for other stuff. Do we ever shop there? Uh, I don't, but I, I, I'll take your word for it for sure. So, I mean, I go to vintage stores all the time. The, the, this goes back to kind of what we were talking about with the wardrobe reset mm-hmm. for me. Um, if I was in the early stages of kind of like developing my own my own style, if I was, if I was, you know, deciding I was interested in it, moving on from a previous look that I didn't think was stylish anymore. Um and building out my wardrobe, mm-hmm. I'd be I I would like I get it. You're hitting you're hitting these places to kind of fill fill in the gaps of your closet. Mm-hmm. Like maybe you can find a cool piece of outerwear. Maybe you can f- can find some good basic tees for dirt cheap from like a like a quality brand, right? Um. So yes, I I completely acknowledge that there are definitely finds and steals to be had mm-hmm. there. Uh, but I think once you are, once you've reached a point where you've got a closet full of stuff that you like and that you wear, uh, I'm, I'm, I just know more specifically what I want and like what brands and what specific pieces I'm focused on. And so the, that, that kind of like that pull to like go kind of hit the bargain bins to see what I can scrounge up. Yeah. Is not there anymore. No, um, because it's right next to Total Wine. I will occasionally walk into Nordstrom Rack. Yeah, every once in a while, and just like take around, just see, just see what's what's up. Is it destroyed in there? No, it's not. No, that one right there on Brody uh-huh. next to Total Wine is is it's nice. Uh, the it, it you know it's the same problem that it's been for many years though, where it's like the rack that's like stuff that's actually from Nordstrom yeah is two percent of the store yeah and everything else is just you know filled filled in with lower end 
junk essentially mm. and not really like off priced. It's just it's priced for Nordstrom Rack. Uh, but you know, last year I found those great tie dye socks there for like four bucks a pop. It's a good place for sunglasses. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of the the reason that I don't like kind of make the rounds at those places anymore is because I the I'm looking for fewer pieces and very specific stuff at this yes. point. Okay. But in those earlier, I think in those earlier stages when you're like flushing out your your closet and you're adding stuff and you you know, you you need a little bit more great to to kind of hunt for bargains. Yeah. Um current style inspirations. We've definitely talked about icons here that we pay attention to. You're a big Justin Thoreau guy. Mhm. Uh, do we have any new ones? Do we have any new Instagram accounts? Do we have any specific looks that are inspir- inspiring? What about guys like Shia LaBeouf, Frank Ocean? Any, any anybody to add to the uh, to the style icon and inspiration wall today? I would go back to Shia. I love that dude. <laughs> in that recent video that came out of him doing the read in his truck, and he yeah. was just baked. Oh God, I can't get enough of that. Yeah, he- but no, his style is is crazy. But I I, I just I like him as a whole. So Shia specifically has become like Grailed just did a whole like an email thing about him. They had it on their stories and and like how he's the source and everybody knows that Kanye has pulled a bunch from his closet for all sorts of collections. Yeah. And he's like this like trendsetter because he doesn't focus on trends and he just like he makes them. And, and no, he and, does. He yeah, no, he does. He does. He does. He did. He did. But he's not. I don't think he's consciously thinking like he's not. This is, is a fit. He's just like no, grabbing that, shit exactly, which is why he is a. That that's why he's a trendsetter because he yeah. does, he's not actively mm-hmm. like getting looks off. He's just like yeah, this, and then he beats it in the ground and gets spotted wearing it for like four months straight, and it's a thing because he's just got that he's got the it factor. He's got the vibe. Mm-hmm. So, but but just so I, I respect that. But he is not a he is not a style inspiration for me. Mm-mm. I respect him as as a as kind of like a like a pillar of the of the community <laughs> in a way <laughs> because I know that that I, you know I know all the stories about him I know like the, how he's kind of how he's done some of that trend setting um but but person he's not personally like a guy that I'm sure I'm constantly looking to um so uh, individuals right now N- none actually stand out. It's probably because there's there's so few people to to there's so few opportunities to like to wear stuff and and be spotted. I, if anybody, it's it's probably Kevin Love at the moment. Um, you know, the Cavs did not make the bubble, so he's had more opportunities to just kind of like do his thing with uh with Kate Bach and his Vishla puppy and mm-hmm. and be out there riding around and getting it. PJ's uh, great. Um, but, but I think, I think Kevin Love has very, very approachable style that like hits on brands and styles that I love, but is really easy to pull off. It, it, Kevin Love never looked like, he never looks like, he, he looks like he's wearing stuff. A lot of the guys wear stuff specifically for the tunnel, Mm -hmm. the NBA guys, you know what I mean? Like it's a, like we, like 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 they say it's a mm-hmm. it's a runway and so those looks can gravitate towards runway esque kevin loves look like you could like he's going home and then he's going to dinner and then drinks yeah. afterwards mm-hmm. and or he's you know what i mean like they're just a little bit more wearable outside of the the tunnel i feel yeah. like um and in his just whole he's just kind of like a he's just uh, he's just goals <laughs> He's just not wearing like outlandish stuff like Harden and right. like Russell wear. Um but I just dig I dig his his vibe. And then as far as like fit inspiration for me right now, I focus on specific brands and how they style their own pieces. And then I honestly where I think I've been getting the most like fit inspiration is from the and I've said this before, but the editorial shoots from multi-brand retailers that carry like a group uh, like a group of brands that i really like they just kill this stuff so a few that like the, the a couple that come to mind canoe club out of boulder colorado yeah. 
Yeah. They do their own photo shoots with the brands that they carry, which is Capital and Visvum and Engineered Garments mm-hmm. and Orslo and Lady White and like uh, needles and like all this dope stuff. And then they put it all together in these little editorial photo shoots and and, and it's great. Like it's awesome. Like like damn, that looks sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, BTSN store, which I think is not American. It's it's European or uh, Canadian. They put together some awesome stuff. Haven out of Canada yeah. has some awesome editorials. And uh, one that I just recently started following, I've, I've, I've toyed around on their website shopping for stuff before, but Mohawk General Store um, is really great. The, the I think one of their like managers or the owner post some fits up on there and just some styled shots in general. Uh, so just, you know, you find these places that carry a bunch of the brands that you like and you see how, how they're kind of, and it's like a thing that they're styling and doing their own shoots now. And that's a great source of inspiration for me too. For sure. So, so uh, and that, that more so than any individuals at the moment. Mm, Mohawk does home goods too. Yeah. Mo- Mohawk's cool. Um, okay, last one, definitely one we've answered before, but always have uh, have a quick moment to talk about it before. Best way to keep white sneakers clean? Yeah, I, you know, I use uh, Jason Mark with two Ks. Yeah. His little cleaning kit. Definitely. And the little starter pack is great. Brush, soap, and then some other solution. Yeah, the only thing that I, would, I, I'll ha- I have two things to add to that. Um, the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. Yeah, for the good. Mids- For the midsoles. Yeah. Are work wonders. It's and now amazing. they it's make amazing. a little thin sheet that's not like a sponge. Oh, do they really? It's like a little cloth. Okay. And then, um, if any of your sneakers or boots or anything, anything that you have that's suede, get a little suede kit. It's yeah. a little like eraser type thing, and then a little uh, suede brush. And that's that's great for suede stuff and for the suede portions of your sneakers. That's good. If something, if you get a little spot on there, you just hit that, hit it with the eraser, and then like brush it out, basically. Mm-hmm. Because suede can be difficult, and you don't want to saturate it or, or put a bunch of cleaner on it, so you need that kind of like that drier clean cleaning type stuff. But a little suede kit, probably eight nine bucks on Amazon, and then the get the magic erasers or the little strips of them, like you're talking about it at your grocery store, basically. So beautiful, or just throw them in the washing machine if you don't if they're like sneakers and you don't care. Yeah, I mean if they're sneaker sneak if they're they're Adidas, yeah, they can go in the washing machine. Absolutely. All right, that is going to wrap it up for us today. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, again, hit us on Instagram, at Club Cool Pod. I think you can probably still put in one if, if you want to go drop something in there for us for, uh, for a future pod. Um, get on the Discord. Check us out, patreon.com slash Club Cool. Big shouts and big thanks to our sponsor, Bespoke Post, today. Again, the code is Club Cool for 20% off of your first box. Thank you to Phil for being here and helping Happy me answer these questions. And uh, yeah, man, we'll see you very soon. Later. Welcome to the club.